Good evening. This is Family Life Update and I'm Javier Padilla. I'm Bianca Elito and here are this week's top news on family and life. In the Philippines, my husband's lover bill filed in Congress. Taking the cue from the popular television soap opera, My Husband's Lover, which depicts the romance of a gay person with a married man, Albay Representative Edsel Lagman Jr., the son of the famous RH proponent Edsel Lagman, has recently filed a bill at the House of Representatives seeking to punish same-sex adultery. The measure seeks to broaden the scope of Article 333 of the Revised Penal Code, which prescribes punishment for a spouse having sexual intercourse with a person of the opposite sex. According to Lagman, the most important facet of the proposed amendments is that a gay and or lesbian can now be prosecuted for adultery, putting them on equal footing with a man and or a woman who knowingly has sexual relations with a married person. However, House Senior Deputy Majority Leader Sherwin Tugna warned that enacting the so-called My Husband's Lover Bill into law would set a dangerous precedent in recognizing homosexual relationships and eventually same-sex marriage. The measure needs to undergo committee and plenary deliberations and voting before it can be passed by the House. Do you watch that show? No, but I've been uh, reading some reviews mm -hmm. about it. I have consciously made the decision not to watch that mm -hmm. show. But you know how social how social media talks about everything, mm -hmm. everything and and uh, anything that's happening online or on. Yeah, even yeah. on Twitter, yeah. it's like it trends every day. My husband's lover, day one, day two, day three. Yeah, and, and I read I read in one of the one of the popular um, sites, uh, entertainment mm -hmm. sites, that. Um, uh, they said they, they call it a breath of fresh air. Really? In in uh, in the prime time. That's evening. the kind of culture that's being propagated <clears throat> by this RH mentality. See, mm -hmm. first they tried to go uh, contraception, and now they're going to have same sex marriage. Mm -hmm. and I think they're testing the yeah, waters. Yeah, definitely. And then divorce will come in, abortion. It's, it's all coming in. Like I as mean. they say, you you give your hand, they they ask for your your the whole arm. arm. Yeah. Exactly. Don't we'll be watching this and definitely. Um, we're gonna block it. And by definition, adultery, before I forget, <laughs> by adultery means extramarital affairs. Mm -hmm. So, how can that yeah. this bill even You know, we really need to know, strengthen person. marriage between man and woman. We need to strengthen. <laughs> I mean, all this is trash, yes. in my opinion. <laughs> On other news, still in the Philippines, Cardinal Tagle pushes for pork barrel. Here food. we go. Okay, this my is one of, one of the favorite topics of having. Manila Archbishop Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle last week joined calls for a closer probe into an alleged multi-billion peso scam involving lawmakers' Priority Development Assistance Fund, PIDAF, or so-called pork barrel. Last month, the misuse of the PIDAF became a hot topic after bogus NGOs were reported to have been used as conduits for the pork barrel of some senators and house members to fund ghost projects worth an estimated 10 billion pesos. Amazing. I mean, <coughs> before we continue, 10 billion pesos. Yes. You just gosh. go around Manila, A whopping 10 billion and then you pesos. see all the squatters and people begging on the streets. 10 billion pesos it goes to luxurious bags and big cars and mansions. And they don't have a conscience. Unbelievable, exactly. and yes. that's why and that's why Cardinal Tagle was emotional. I'm also I emotional. Think I think I'll cry. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you love the people that Here, you're serving, have some water. Yeah, have some water. <laughs> if you love the people you're serving, it really will bring you to tears. Obviously, these politicians are in it for themselves. Mm -hmm. Anyway, continuing on, Cardinal Tagle speaking at the press conference at the University of Santo Tomas in Manila talked emotionally about the pork barrel scam. Take note that this cardinal usually declines to answer answer questions mm -hmm. about politics since becoming Archbishop in 2012, but not this time. Cardinal Tagle branded the scam as heartbreaking. Holding back tears, Tagle called on the culprits to repent, adding that they might have dipped their fingers in the nation's coffers because they did not know what the poor were going through every day. He challenged the politicians who are linked to the intricate web of corruption to visit the poor and slum areas so that they would feel how the less fortunate live and to make them realize how the PIDAP should really be spent. I mean, you go to Congress and you see all these big cars and all the congressmen have bodyguards and assistants. And the, and the, the lifestyle that they live, yeah. it's so... It's, all over, the, it's all over the social network. <laughs> Just like 10 billion pesos, <laughs> unbelievable. And then, but if you just go across the street from Congress where there are a lot of uh, poor people, I mean, 
how can you? They really have no soul. I mean, how can you and get into your huge car and then pass these people on the street and steal money from the people? I mean, it's crazy. And I think that's for Cardinal Tagle to say that, um, you know, maybe they did not see this. I think, you know, he's just being, well, the, the holy man that he is. Yeah. But truly, how can you be, how can you not see yeah. every day you, you pass it every day? If only I was just as holy as him, but now, you know, I'm just <laughs> angry. Seeing all these posts about the uh, scam on social networks, it just makes me so mm -hmm. mad. As, uh. And then in Congress, <laughs> I mean, I get to watch some sessions. We, we try to speak mm -hmm. about it, and then we're always shut down. We're always saying, no, don't speak about it. So, you know, these congressmen, and well, not all of them, a lot of them, don't want to talk about it. It makes you wonder why. They're, they're protecting we all know some why. people or they're protecting themselves. Yeah, we all know why. We do. Everyone to show your support for a recent resolution filed with the House of Representatives calling for the immediate suspension of the PDAF. Just go to the link flashed on screen. Um, you know, the resolution states that pending the investigation of the NBI to stop getting your PDAF projects or stop allocating money for the PDAF, which is just right. I mean, it's the right thing to do. That was just yesterday, right? The uh, DOJ. Secretary. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a continuing they story. Yeah. That they will that that they will not choose whether you are uh, uh, an ally or or not of the, Hopefully. Of the government. We just so want the truth. Let's let's hope that um, they back their words up. And again, lawmakers make laws. Lawmaker make laws. It doesn't say law project maker. I mean, it's so obvious. So ah, breathe. <laughs> Moving on to our next news story. Time Magazine praises the child-free life. The child-free trend is experiencing its biggest mainstream media moment ever, all because of Time Magazine's attention-grabbing cover story this August. The August 12 issue of Time Magazine is getting a lot of criticism, and many have found the topic offensive, as it featured a smiling, carefree couple, lounging on a white sand beach, relaxing with arms intertwined, on their without a care in the world. And then it's evident on their tan happy faces <laughs> with the headline, The Child Free Life When Having It All Means Not Having Children. Child free is the word used to describe those who don't want children as opposed to childless, which is for people who want kids but don't have them. Times cover is in reference to the staggering statistic that the current birth rate in the United States is the lowest in recorded mm -hmm. American history. From 2007 to 2011, the article states the, fer the fertility rate declined by 9%. Hence, writer Lawrence Sandler points out that an increasing percentage of Americans are bypassing parenting. Or in other words, more and more American women are looking at the motherhood at motherhood and saying, you know what? No. Which is so depressing. It's sad, yeah. And after exploring the many reasons why women might decide not to procreate, Times Lawrence Sandler decides that this is a pretty cool decision. I mean, when you, when I have children, you have children, mm -hmm. and it's, 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 it's fulfilling. I mean, if God has given you the chance to actually have children, it's really, it's really fulfilling. And, I and mean, it, it be, if I may, if I may, God, you being a mother and, you know, being a woman mm -hmm. and saying that, you know what? No, I just don't want, I, I, I just feel that there's, they're plain, um, they plain selfish. Yeah. I guess it's part of the contraceptive mentality because the drop in birth rate and you know it's my body and I can do whatever I want and mm -hmm. children are just baggage. I mean it's, it's really... In, imagine if, if, if their parents thought about them that way then they won't be it, here. Exactly that's what, I, that's what I tell all my friends who say what you have four kids? <laughs> well you know you're the fourth. Mm -hmm. I mean if your kids had your mindset you wouldn't be here if your parents had your exactly. mindset. Exactly. On the lighter side we bring you our feature topic this week. Let's hear it from Marcel Badilia. Good evening friends! Hi, I'm Marisa Badilla, and the month of August is also known as the month of the national language or in Filipino, Buwan ng Wikang Pambansa. And our topic today will cover a different kind of language as we bring you tonight's topic, Understanding the Five Love Languages. According to the book of Dr. Gary Chapman, who is a renowned marriage counselor, he says that there are five basic love languages and these are needed to fill what we call our love tank. And these five love languages are words of affirmation, acts of service, quality time, 
giving gifts, and physical touch. First, let's discuss words of affirmation. Some people, they feel so much love when they receive words of praise or affirmation and words of encouragement or kindness. And telling your spouse how much you appreciate them, when you encourage them when they do something good, and general words of praise and acceptance all show our love and it fills their love tanks to the brim. The second love language is acts of service. Have you ever heard the word actions speak louder than words? This actually means that our actions will show more love than just our words. So let's do something special for the one we love. The third love language is receiving gifts. You will make your spouse feel very special and loved by giving gifts during their birthdays, holidays, anniversaries, and even when there's no occasion. For them, especially for the ones who really like receiving gifts, gifts are not simply material objects. They are expressions of your love. So the gifts need not be very expensive or elaborate. It can just be very simple and cheap. Uh, remember, it's the thought that counts. So most of the time, those who, who usually give gifts are the ones also whose love language is receiving gifts. So make sure if your spouse comes home from uh, a meeting and brings you a, a, a cup of coffee or donuts, then that's her love language. Maybe you can reciprocate the next time that you go out. The fourth love language is quality time. If your spouse's love language is quality time, giving him or her your undivided attention definitely fills her love tank. And you can show this by quality conversations, undivided attention that when she comes into the room, you can turn off the TV or uh, log off from the computer and just give your spouse undivided attention. Uh, it's, one of, it's one of the best ways by which you can show your love. The last but not def definitely not the least love language is physical touch. We have long known the power that physical touch brings. That's why we carry babies and touch them very tenderly. Long before the infant understands the meaning of the word love, he or she feels loved by our care and attention. And so the same holds true for our spouse. A simple touch on the arm, a hug, or a back rub will convey the love that you have for your spouse. These five love languages also apply to our children. Physical touch, definitely a hug or a kiss, will bring more positive energies into your relationship. Words of affirmation, definitely our children, we normally tell them no or neg something negative when they, when they do something wrong. But rarely do we praise them when they do something good. So a, a child whose language, love language is words of affirmation would need more of our praise and our love expressed in words so that the person, our children, will try to be, will be more encouraged and try to be better because they know that we notice the good things that, they, that we do, that they actually do. Acts of service, when we uh, take care of our children and when we provide the things that um, they need, like our food, the food in the table and done in a very loving way, these are definitely acts of service that our children would um, really treasure. Gifts, the gifts need not be very expensive as we mentioned earlier, but these gifts would be a reminder that we remember them when we were away. That's why Filipinos, we have the Pasalubong culture, wherein we, uh, we love giving gifts to the ones we love. Spending quality time with our kids is definitely very important as well. For children, um, especially for growing up teenagers, um, this may pose a little challenge, but uh, it will go a long way if we spend time with our children to get to know their likes and the things that um, we can spend time together. Okay, so definitely find out what your children and your spouse, uh, what their love languages are. And show them love in the ways that they can best understand and appreciate. So that they, you can keep their love tank full and brimming. Okay, so remember, our family is God's gift to us. They deserve only the best. This is Maricel Badilla for Family and Life Update. 
now I turn you over back to Happy and Bianca. Thank you, Cell. That's one, that's one of my favorite topics. Love languages. Yeah, love language. What's your love language? My love language is quality time. And fortunately, my husband's love language is also oh, quality okay, time. okay. That's good. So we always, that's why we always go out yeah. and go out and our my love language is uh, not stealing from the poor, <laughs> giving them their due. Yeah, your la love language is what? Gifts. Yeah, gifts, gifts. Gifts. Me and my wife. My wife and I, both gifts. That's why we're broke all the time. But you <laughs> yeah. know, happy, happy. You have to have a lot of pedaf. <laughs> no, no pedaf. <laughs> okay, that's it this week. Read more about these stories at familylifeupdate.com. We are on Facebook too. Just search for Family and Life Update. And on Twitter, it's at official family. Thanks for watching us. Share the word about us, family and life update. Don't forget to subscribe to our Flick Media channel here on YouTube. Getting thousands of hits every single day. You bet. Yeah, you're missing out if you don't watch our shows. Family Life Update, presenting news for today's family, making a stand in today's life issues. And for a quote this week from actor Jet Li, I believe the world is one big family and we need to help each other. Good night, God bless you and your families.